Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn with some Christmas Critter gift tags. This is a set of six gift tags showcasing the critters in the snow and critters in the Arctic images. And then I've used some hats from the critters in the Arctic and then the toboggan together as well. I'm gonna start by stamping all of the animals or critters I'm using here today on some smooth white cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I'll color everything in with Copic markers. I'm gonna just use a common, or quite a few of the critters. You could definitely do more of these if you wanted to. I just did a nice assortment here. Making sure I like that little Santa hat from the toboggan together and it's gonna fit nicely on a lot of the critters so I'm gonna stamp it a few times. I'm also going to stamp from the Critters in the Arctic the little um, piece of ice there so that I can put that underneath the seal and walrus. I'm going to start coloring in my images. I'm going to color the moose here. This, if you saw my card from a while back that had, there was a shaker card with this moose, I colored it exactly the same way. I really liked how it turned out, so I went ahead and use the same colors for my image here today. The antlers, I did do a lighter color. You could definitely do darker if you prefer that look. It's completely up to you. Also, if you don't have Copic markers, consider using any markers that you might have, colored pencils, watercolors, watercolor markers, anything like that. Um, you definitely are not limited to coloring with Copic markers. Any of the marker colors I am using today are shown across the bottom of the screen to make it easy. If you are ever wondering exactly which color of marker or colored pencil I'm using, I am listing them somewhere on the screen to make it easy for reference. The E55 and E57 that I'm using for the majority of the mousse here do take a little bit of blending. Um, I also went with a lighter E30 and E53 for the stomach area to blend that into the darker colors. And you just kind of have to keep working at it to get those to blend really nicely. I even went in with an E79, which is really dark, to add that definition between the head and the rest of the body. And then I'm going to go in and create some little dots to give some texture to my critter. So I'll start with E79 and only place those dots in the darkest areas and then pull out with the E57, pull that color out a little bit further. And you can even go in with E55 a little bit. I'm gonna use all the same colors for this reindeer from the Critters in the Snow stamp set. I love that it looks like he's in flight his antlers, however, are going to be darker. They're E57 and E79. Just using the colors in a little bit different order. Again, going with the E30 for the stomach area. And the base color of the body is going to be E55 again. I kept the underside of his tail, that lighter color. And because there aren't any hooves on this reindeer. I am going to darken the bottom of his feet to give him some. Just a little way to customize the image. Again, blending E55 and E57 for the fur here. And blending that into the stomach area, which I did lighter. The E79 is going to give some, it's much darker, and it's going to give some nice definition. I'm using it very sparingly, just a little tiny bit here and there. Making sure to blend out and then adding some dots with my E57. And also the E55. The tip of the nose is going to be R29. Here's the bottom of those feet or the hooves. R29 for the nose to make him Rudolph. I'm going to move to the polar bear now, all in shades of warm gray. I'm going to keep him fairly light, but to give him that depth and dimension, I am going to pull in up to warm gray four. It's going to be really light. I did 
start on the lighter end of the spectrum with warm gray 00, zero all over and then warm gray 2 to add some shadowing. It wasn't quite enough and so I did pull in the little warm gray 4 and you'll see that here in a minute. And that's really going to give me some nice detail. You can see the difference here, how that really highlights where the legs are, how the head um, is turned into the body a little bit, things like that. Blend it out with a little warm gray one. R00 for the cheek, and then I will go in with like warm gray seven or eight for the nose to really make it darker. And I'm adding some dots again, starting with my darker colors, or the darker of the light colors, I should say, and then pulling it out a little bit into the lighter colors. I'll finish up the polar bear, and then we will move on to the Santa hats next. These are from the Toboggan Together stamp set, I think I mentioned earlier. I love that you can mix and match so many of the images from different Lawn Fawn stamp sets together to create truly unique um, images. So you definitely don't have to stick all to one stamp set, and so many of these images work together from across all of the stamp sets. R24 and 29 for the red areas on the hat, warm gray 00 and 1 for the white. I'll move on to the seal now, working with a little bit darker warm gray markers. I went in with my darkest color first, which is the warm gray 7, and then I'm using warm gray 5, and even a little too for the majority of the body. And then I'll keep working on that to build up the color. And I will use the dot technique again to add some interest and texture to the seal skin. I always like to go around like the legs and things and really darken up those areas with my darker colors. Here's that dot technique starting again with the darkest, then the lightest, and kind of gradually extending that out. Little R00 for the cheek lightens that area a little bit. All the same colors are going to be used for the walrus down here. Go ahead and do pretty much the same thing I did for the seal. I did start with a lighter body color to begin with for him, and I did make a little change, but that will be a little bit later, where I pulled in a little bit of an E color just to change the skin color. I, I, I wanted it to have a little bit more of a brown undertone, and so you'll see that here in a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more about it then. Some of the warm grays did bleed just a tiny bit into his teeth, to his tusks. So what I did for that was take a white gel pen once I was completely done coloring this and I went over that area to whiten them back up. That way I didn't have to stamp and recolor the whole image. I was able to save it by just going over it with a white gel pen. There's where it bled a little bit. I oversaturated the paper. Going to add in that darkest color around the legs and the tail. Pull out just a little bit more of that darker color a little further into the body there. And around all those little areas on his face, the tusks and everything. And then start the dot technique again, which I think adds a lot of fun texture to an image. It's a little bit darker on this one than it is for the seal. I'm going to move to the penguin, which is going to be even darker yet. Instead of using a totally black color, there is a black Copic marker, but I don't think that I have ever used it, except maybe to color like uh, white pearls or something like that and make them black. Um, I always go with my cool grays or warm grays and use the darker end of the spectrum in those color families to build up the color to black, if that makes sense. So I went with warm gray eight and six here to build up that black color that you see for the penguin. Then I'm using YR04 and 07 for the beak and 
his feet and a little warm gray zero zero and one for his stomach. Add in just a little bit more definition with my darkest color, that warm gray eight to finish him up. For the stocking caps, again, I'm gonna to stick to the same red colors that I used for the Santa caps, R2429 and warm gray 001 for the white areas. Just to keep it really, really simple. I wanted the color palette to all be very similar. You could definitely go with any colors that you wanted to. Here's a, that E87 that I'm using to pull in a little bit more brown into the walrus and it definitely gives a little bit more of a brown undertone it's a little hard to see on the screen here but I think in the finished design I really liked how it looked so I'm just gonna go over him until I get him fixed up lastly I am going to color in these two great little icebergs a little BG10 for that nice blue color and then warm gray 00 and warm gray 1. I didn't want to add a ton of color, just a hint of color so that they aren't stark white. Pull a little bit more of that warm gray 1 a little further out and then I can go back with BG10 to give it a little bit of that bluish ice color. Now I'm going to go ahead and line up all of the coordinating dies to go over these images. So I'm going to get as many of these die cut with one pass of my machine as possible. Some of the images will have to be rolled through multiple times like the hats or the ice, but for the most part I can get the majority of these images die cut with one pass of the machine, which is I always try to get as many through with one pass as possible. It saves time. I can pop all of these out now I'm going to add a little bit of detail, some glossy accents to the nose on all of the critters, and also to the ice. I want to make sure I do this before I work on any of the rest of the tags. That way this can dry while I'm working on all the other steps. You definitely also want to add glossy accents after you have die cut the images. If you do it before, it will either stick or cause your die cutting not to die cut quite as nice. So while all of that is drying, I am going to die cut multiples of the large sized stitched round circle tag from Lawn Fawn. I'm gonna need six of these. I think I'm actually gonna need nine of these. I should, should have wrote, uh, put that in the notes here. I'm gonna add that across the bottom of the screen. You're gonna need nine of them, six for the back of the tags. On the back of the tags, I am going to use some sentiments from one of the tag stamp sets from Lawn Fawn and stamp a gift from me to you with the lobster red ink across the, the top of each of these tags. This is going to be the back of the tags. You want to stamp this first so that anything that has dimension doesn't skew this. So go ahead and do this while they're flat before you attach anything to the front. I'm stamping the to and from using the black licorice ink. And then to even dress the backs of these up more, I'm gonna stamp the little holly here using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and coloring it in with Copic markers. So I'm gonna stamp these next to that a gift from me to you greeting, just quickly doing it assembly line style. Then I'll take my R29 Copic marker and color in the holly berries. And I'm purposely not coloring from line to line. So you might see a little bit of white here and there. I did that on purpose. I think it gives it a little bit of texture without having to do any ink blending with additional colors. And then for the leaves, I'm using YG95 and 97. Again, not even going back and blending them. The YG95 is the base color. Go over that dark center line with YG97 to darken it up. You don't have to go back with the lighter color and blend anything out. Very easy, very simple, but it definitely dresses up the back. Now I have die cut six tags from the khaki, Simon Says Stamp khaki cardstock, and I stamped each of them with the snowy backdrops border image using the Yeti white pigment ink. 
And then from those three extra tags that I cut from white cardstock, I am using a stitched hillside border die. And I am die cutting that so I have a little snowy border for the bottom of each of my tags. Then I'm going to attach that to the bottom of the tag and then place my images right there um, on each tag to create the decorative critter tags. So this one has a seal sitting on a piece of ice or a little um, block of ice or whatever. And then I'm going to attach the cute little Santa hat right to his head. There's a little foam adhesive behind both the seal and the Santa hat to make it lay a little bit nicer with all of that dimension with the glossy accents. Then I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of one of the tags that has all the greetings and the to and from and attach the khaki tag with the critter to the other one back to back. The string I'm going to use or the twine is the coral lawn trimmings twine and I'm going to go ahead and cut six of these to the same length so that each of these tags is relatively the same. I'll do that really quick. Even though this is the coral lawn trimmings twine, I find it's really, it coordinates nicely with the reds and it's close enough that it, it doesn't look too orangey. Go ahead and thread one of those through the top, tie a knot in the end of that, and I'll just even up the ends of that twine with a pair of scissors. And that is what they look like. So I'll go ahead and finish the rest of these. Again, you can see I'm using some foam adhesive on the back of the critters to pop them up and add just a little bit of a fun dimensional element to the tags. I'm using every little bit and piece of these little scraps of foam tape. I've already attached the little snowy borders along the bottom of each of the tags. And I love the way that Yeti white ink looks against the khaki cardstock. That snowy backdrops border is one of my favorites for creating a great snowy look in the background. And all of the critters except for the reindeer are going to have some sort of a hat. So the moose has this cute little stocking cap. And the seal that I did previously has that cute little Santa cap. So they're going to have one or the other except for the reindeer. He's not going to have one. Two of the tags have the cute little block of ice there. The walrus is going to be sitting on this one. Peel off that backing paper and pop him in place. This is a really, it's really easy to do this assembly line style. I'm going to finish with to make some uh, dimension to the caps with the Marvy snow pin. You just heat, apply it, heat it up, and you can watch it puff up here and it gives some really great dimension. That's it for my holiday critter gift tags. Thanks for watching this video showcasing lawn, fawn, stamps, and dies. The supplies I've used to create these tags are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.